Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her. Mark has a policy for phones going off, but uh, for his year, we'll let it go this, this time, huh? <laughs> Dr. Joe McCool will do our invocation. Joe? It is a time to be thankful and a time for hope. We thank God for the inspirational and service above self leadership of soon to be past president Richard Hook and his board of directors. He gave us constant reminders of what were the ideals and actions to be expected of us as Rotarians. He led by example, following the dictum of St. Francis of Assisi preach the good news often when necessary, use words. Thank you, President Richard, for your inspirational example. It is a time for hope that soon to be President Mark Fernandes will fill the shoes and live out Richard's inspirational example. Knowing that he speaks and is answerable to an even higher power. He too knows firsthand that it is no use walking anywhere unless his walking is his preaching. As a fellow Rotarian pilgrim in search of truth, his practice is his most effective preaching. If religion has had any meaningful message throughout the ages, it has been that our love of God has been intimately intertwined with our love of neighbor. Les Miserables says it clearly, to love another person is to see the face of God. John has written, anyone who says, I love God and hates his brother is a liar, since no one who fails uh, to love the brother whom he can see, uh, cannot love God whom he has not seen. So then how do we, Rotarians or not, love God? Lord, when did we see that you were hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and make you feel welcome? When did we see you naked and clothe you? When did we find you sick or in prison and visit you? And the answer from our service above self conscience and the God within will come back to us. Whenever you did these things to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Whenever you collected food, or money for a local food pantry. You did it to feed me. Whenever you greeted the Mandela scholars, guests in our country, you made me feel as a welcome friend, not a stranger. Whenever you visited me at Westgate, Braymore, Heights Crossing, you made me feel important and did wonders for my self-esteem. 
whenever you extended a welcome hand demonstrating kindness and inclusion to L LGBTQ fellow citizen, you're including me as an equal, and I feel included and that my life is worth living. As Rotarians, frequently reminded of the high moral mandate of the four-way test, and in the face of the unbelievable luxury of our lives, let us never forget the unspeakable poverty of those who are deprived of the most basic necessities of life and of our sacred obligation to share our good fortune with them. We thank you for President Richard and his example, and we pray and anticipate the vision and leadership of President Mark. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Lunch is served. I love hitting that bell. Okay, we're going to get started with our program today. Thank you all for being here today. We have a very nice crowd on such a beautiful day here. Uh, first, in order to start our program, I'd like to invite past president. Can we call him past president yet? Richard. Please to come to the uh, podium. Third president. You know we want him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably ready to get out, aren't you? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. say no, I want another yes. But we make this presentation presented to Richard Hook, president, 2018-19 Rotary Club of Brockton, uh, plaque and your past president's pin. Please give him, uh, Richard a round of applause. Speech, speech, speech. <laughs> a short one. Thanks, Bill, and thanks, Joe. That was a very nice invocation. So I started, I stood here a year ago, and I was nervous. No doubt I was nervous. I wasn't sure of the challenges ahead of me, how I would handle them, and what I'd do. Today I stand here and I'm excited and relieved. <laughs> I'm excited for Mark, I'm excited for the club, and for the upcoming year, because I know it'll be a, a wonderful one. So I'm excited. Now that my year's behind me, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I learned no one is too old to change, okay, and to learn. For me, I had to remember I don't change, you know, what you can't change. Accept what you can't change. And that, that worked out well. I set no goals for membership. Instead, we worked on what I thought was our challenges. And that's for the community, our community, to know what Rotary is and what Rotary does. For them to understand us and serve us of self. So off to the streets we went. We visited nursing homes, handing out flowers, walking the halls at Christmas time and singing, sponsored the senior citizens, joining them for the, uh, their walk uh, against elder abuse. We wrapped Christmas gifts for the less fortunate families. We made and delivered bag lunches for the homeless. We filled backpacks for children so no child will go <clears throat> behind. We strung Christmas lights at Keys Park on a cold winter night. 
And I thought the whole time, I gotta be soft. <laughs> Until I saw those little kids light up, brighter than those lights. Service above self. A club is the strongest when we come together to offer hands-on in the community. Our strength doesn't come from numbers. It comes from our actions. When we bring the mission of Rotary out and away from the buffet and into the streets, we shine together. Those are the experiences that I will always Service above self. In closing, I want to express my gratitude for your trust in my leadership and thank all of you who stood beside me. We brought Rotary to the true heroes, those we asked to help those who accepted what we are and had to offer, for they're the reason we are who we are. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> Very nice. And congratulations to you on your year as president of our club. Great job. At this time, I'd like to invite all the officers and directors for our coming year, 2019-2020, to join me in the front of the room for your installation. Officers and directors. This is, a, this is a good crew. Mark, nice job. I think you twisted a few arms in this one. Yeah. Sisto's around for a second tour of duty. That's great. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, to incoming officers and directors, you have been elected to the important position in the administration of the Rotary Club of Brockton. This is an indication of your fellow Rotarians' esteem and confidence in all of you. They also believe you will uphold the high traditions of your club, that you will give the best of your executive ability to the furtherance of the interest of your club and carrying forward the object of Rotary. Will you fulfill the responsibilities of your office to the best of your ability and in accordance with the constitution and bylaws of this club? Yes. 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 I hereby declare the new office and directors installed and give President Mark the gavel, well, the symbol of the transfer administration. That's coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Could I have all the uh, officers and directors that 
served over the past year. Could you just stand, please? If you've, if you've served over the past year. Okay. Uh, please, give them a round of applause for their volunteer. <laughs> to those ladies and gentlemen, though you are retiring from the administration of your club, your continued active involvement in this club is extremely important and highly encouraged. Thank you so much. At this time, I would like to invite up uh, Gary Oman for a presentation. Thank you, President Bill, <clears throat> past President Bill. His blood pressure just went up. Well, remember, the gavel hasn't been passed quite yet. So, so I have the, the honor and pleasure to present uh, Paul Harris Fellow Awards this afternoon um, to a couple of very special people. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in doing so, I'd like to invite Mark and Elizabeth Ferreira to the front, please. That was for Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, past president, I guess, Richard, would you please join us up here? I could use your assistance in just a moment. Thank you. So the presentation of Paul Harris Fellow recognition, <clears throat> excuse me, is the Rotary's foundation way of expressing its appreciation for a substantial contribution to its humanitarian and educational programs. It is named for our founder, Paul Harris, a Chicago lawyer who started Rotary International with three business associates 114 years ago in 1905. We move closer to a world of peace and goodwill today as Elizabeth Ferreira becomes a Paul Harris Fellow and newly to be installed club president, Mark Ferreira, becomes a Paul Harris Fellow plus one. Their gifts to the Rotary Foundation, educational and humanitarian programs are a commitment to peace and to a better life for people across the world, people whom they may never meet. These are truly selfless, selfless actions. Elizabeth and Mark, it is because of gifts like yours that the Rotary Foundation is able to carry out an array of programs that achieve beneficial changes in our world, improve living conditions, increase food production, better education, wider availability of treatment and re rehabilitation for the sick and disabled, new channels for the flow of international understanding and bright hopes for peace. As Paul Harris Fellows, Elizabeth and Mark join a remarkable company of persons throughout the world, all recognized for their devotion to the ideal of goodwill, peace, and understanding. It is the goal of Rotarians the world over, and one that Elizabeth and Mark clearly share. First, it gives me great pleasure, Elizabeth, to present you with the three emblems of appreciation given to a Paul Harris Fellow. Richard, would you present those, please? which is a certificate, a medallion, and a Paul Harris Fellow pin. <laughs> it 
Did you want to actually get the yeah. picture of your <laughs> and to you, Mark, the Paul Harris, Paul Harris Fellow plus one, the pin decorated with a sapphire stone. We congratulate you both, and we thank you for your commitment to the programs of the Rotary Foundation. Congratulations, and best of luck with this year coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Congratulations, Elizabeth and, and Mark. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to invite past president, past district governor, and our favorite member of all of Rotary, Mort Feinberg. <laughs> Come on up here, Mort. I have a box here. You've got to step on the box. Okay. That's an old joke. That's Hugo Papro used to always, every time Mort came to the microphone, Hugo Papro would say, stand up! And I did. <laughs> this is at this time we'd uh, invite Mark. We're going to have the installation of uh, President Mark. Yes, indeed. I don't know why I can't find my glasses, but I can. <clears throat> Mark, do you want to uh, come to the... Do you, Mark Ferreira, solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of president of the Rotary Club of Brockton, Massachusetts, and that you will, to the best of your ability, give support and assistance to the district governor and to Rotary International and that you will uphold the Constitution and bylaws of this club. President Ferreira, you have been elected president of the Rotary Club of Brockton, Massachusetts, by its members as an expression of their confidence in your leadership. Your fellow Rotarians will expect much of their president, and in return, they know that you will expect much of their volunteerism and complete cooperation during this coming Rotary year. Congratulations and much success in the days and months ahead of you. And now, after all, be seated. Will the officers and directors so elected please rise? In, in accordance with established club bylaws, you will constitute the board of directors, and as such, you will meet uh, as directed by the president who will preside at all meetings. In the event that the president is unable to preside, the president-elect or vice president shall perform the duties as directed by the president. The club secretary has the responsibility of keeping and maintaining attendance <coughs> records, board meetings, as well as making required 
reports to Rotary International and District 7950. The secretarial position is of utmost importance as the, as the administrator and interpreter of club bylaws and constitution. The treasurer shall have custody of all funds and will make reports of club finances as directed by the president and the board. The sergeant in arms will perform such duties normally prescribed for that position. Will all of you now raise your right hand? <sighs> Will you fulfill the responsibilities of your office to the best of your ability and in accordance with the bylaws and the constitutional documents of this club? Please answer, I will. I congratulate all of you and wish you much success in the coming year. And now, do we have a pin here for Mark? Yes, we do. Now it gives me great pleasure to present the president pin and the uh, plaque. And where is that plaque? Oh, no plaque. The plaque was Richards. Okay, well, I thought we, that last year we gave a plaque. But anyway, my dear man, congratulations and your pin. And I'll have the pleasure of letting you have a member of your family put that pin on. Sure. <laughs> if I can only open it up, you'll have to do that. Good. Okay. And now, you want to have? Yeah, sure. Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth? <laughs> oh, here she comes. That's what he just told me. Okay. I don't follow directions. <laughs> Fellow Rotarians. Fellow Rotarians, I ask that you stand and wish success to our new president, Mark Ferreira. Thank you, friends, and thank you, past district governor. Service above self, as has been mentioned already today, is the motto of Rotary, and I am inspired by all the Rotarians in this room who exemplify that every day. We have Rotarians making a difference in our community and in the world by serving in their daily lives, in the workplace, in public service, in neighborhoods among our families, and in the simple day-to-day -day interactions along the way. I do want to recognize a few Rotarians for special distinction today, and I think this will be a surprise for some. Uh, the Rotary International dropped the mandatory attendance requirement some time ago. There are some Rotarians who continue to meticulously uh, give of their time in attending meetings, club events, committee meetings, and service opportunities. I'll ask the following Rotarians to come forward to receive a certificate for perfect attendance for this year. And I have uh, certificates here. Uh, Joanne Woods Young. I'm not joking. <laughs> and, I'll, and, I'll, oh and, I'll, and I'll explain more about how this perfect attendance works in a moment, but in the meantime, uh, Tina White. All right, Tina. Tom Sampson. Oh.
That's right, somebody has. I think uh, a prorated attendance record, uh, Bob Saltzman. Surprise for somebody. That's okay. I'll tell you how this works. Where's Elaine? Elaine Murray. I caught I caught you mid-mouthful, but that's okay. We're, we're, we're all friends. Thank you. Amy Corum. President Richard Hook. Right. So, for those who aren't aware of uh, of how perfect attendance works, it doesn't mean showing up at every single event that we do. It means that your attendance for the year is equal to the number of regular meetings that we hold, meaning that you don't have to be at every meeting and function, but when you show up for a service activity, a committee meeting, a make-up breakfast, a different Rotary Club's meeting, you get credit. If we have 45 to 50 meeting, regular meetings scheduled in a year, then these Rotarians have showed up at a Rotary activity of some kind 40 to 50 times this year, or prorated since joining. Uh, and uh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I, want, I want to recognize this to highlight one of the benefits of Rotary, is that there are many different ways to engage and many different ways to put service above self. While I've been a member of this club for almost four years, I became a Rotarian nearly a decade ago. In District 6690, I served as a club president and as an assistant governor for the district. In fact, the tie I'm wearing today back here, uh, not my usual uniform tie, it's the Rotary International theme tie from the year that I served as a president of the Portsmouth, Ohio club. So that's wow. sentimental for me and connecting some of my Rotary service. Um, but uh, what I've learned through my involvement in different districts and different clubs and what I've seen exemplified here in our Brockton Club is that Rotary is a broad organization that attracts many different types of people for many different reasons and unites them under the object of Rotary. The object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of, a service, of service as a basis of worthy enterprise and in particular to encourage and foster first the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. That's our fellowship. Second, high ethical standards in businesses and professions, the recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations, and the dignifying of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve society. That's service through our careers and in our workplace by maintaining good ethical standards. Third, the application of the ideal of service in each Rotarian's personal, business, and community life. In other words, all of life is service when we're making the world a better place. Fourth, the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace through a world fellowship of businesses and professional persons united in the ideal of service. Friends, we are connected globally in our efforts to serve. And the beauty of Rotary is that there are many different ways to serve. We have five avenues of service. Some of you are very familiar with that. Some of you, this might be a little bit new, but I want to describe them real quick. First is club service, making our club strong through relationships and membership development. And this is what happens at our meetings and in our friendships and our fellowship together. Vocational service is working with integrity and expertise to apply our skills to the problems and needs of society. We do this in our workplaces and when we bring our experience and skills to the table to solve problems and invest in Brockton. Community service is improving the quality of life and serving the public interest in our community. And this is our service projects. By the way, we'll still be aiming to replace one lunch meeting per quarter with a mini service project. And we're going to streamline the way that we make you aware of service opportunities. And we're going to distinguish between club endorsed events and other things happening in our community that you may want to participate in as an individual. International service is our global reach in promoting peace and understanding. That's why we don't just send money overseas. We partner with a local club in the place that we want to serve when we do that because the purpose, the real aim of international service is connection and understanding. And finally, youth service is empowering youth and young professionals. 
We're proud to be involved with Rotaract. This year we sponsored delegates to Ryla, and we're going to be hearing about that at a later meeting. Good things happening with the young people in our community. I'll be getting into more details on this year's agenda and goals at our joint board meeting in a few weeks, but for now I do want to share with you my goals for this year in brief. None of this is earth shattering. Uh, and none of it should result in great upheaval or unrealistic expectations for our members. I want to improve what we're doing and continue to make our club better for our members and better for Brockton. To do that, first I'll be working with the board and committee chairs to revamp and update our committee structure to better reflect reality and practicality. We're going to schedule a work session to that end and I hope to present the result to the club in an assembly early this fall. Second, I want to improve our onboarding for new members by making sure that each new Rotarian understands who we are, what we're doing, and what's actually expected of them. I'm grateful to Elaine, who's going to be integral to that process. Third, we're going to be talking about the Rotary Foundation more. Our club supports the foundation well, but I want to ensure that each Rotarian knows what that is, why it's worth supporting, and how to make donations. I believe in the power of the Rotary Foundation's various funds to make change in the world and in our community. And I'm glad to have Gary as a strong foundation chair for our club. Thank you, Gary. I know that we're going to have a great year. And I want to express my thanks to Richard and his team for the great progress made this past year. We're going to continue to build on that success. I know that there are many different reasons that each of you became Rotarians and continue to participate in our club. Some of you love community service. Some of you love the fellowship or the interesting speakers. Some of you love to have an organization to entrust with your donations. Some of you love being part of a global force for positive change. I hope that all of you love Rotary as I do. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve as president this year. And thank you for serving alongside me. Thank you, uh, President Mark. Those are uh, very good words for us to uh, listen and kind of take heed. And uh, I'd like to make one more challenge to this group and to follow with Mark's leadership. Let's go out and spread the word of Rotary. Let's bring some new members in, invite them in here, and let's share what, all the good things that we do. So let's work on that this year. Elaine, let's get some, let's build our membership. Thank you very much. Have a great day.